If you are one of the five million people affected by Alzheimer's disease, you know firsthand the toll it takes on families. It's a disease that strips people of their memories and their identity, and as yet, there's no proven way to prevent or cure it. But that could change as a result of groundbreaking research being done here in Boston and across the country. WGBH News reporter Sean Cochran starts our story in San Diego. That's what they... They come in. Inside this clear plexiglass box, inside one of its opaque little bottles, is a compound that Dr. Steve Wagner hopes will prevent Alzheimer's disease. It's a matter of selecting the one which is going to work the best in the animals, which hopefully will work in humans. Wagner and his team at the University of California are testing 250 drug compounds to see which one best stops a protein called amyloid beta, or A-beta, from clogging people's brains with plaques. Wagner's about a year away from testing his drug in humans, so if it doesn't work, he needs to know now. There's a phrase that people in the drug industry use, and it's like, kill it early. If something's going to die, you want it to die in here, not in the clinic. The National Institutes of Health is trying to fast-track Wagner's drug, in part because big pharmaceutical companies are losing interest in Alzheimer's treatments. They're getting frustrated with the lack of success they've had with central nervous system diseases, so a lot of the major pharmaceutical companies have cut back. For years, pharmaceutical companies concentrated their efforts on preventing plaques from forming in the brain. But what Wagner's trying to do is regulate the protein that causes plaques, like you would cholesterol. But not everyone agrees. But some researchers, including Dr. David Schubert, here at the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California, are not convinced that reducing amyloid will lead to a cure or preventative for Alzheimer's. I just don't think that that's going to, to work in the long run. Schubert has come up with his own Alzheimer's compound based on a curry spice, turmeric. It works as an anti-inflammatory, an antioxidant, protecting brain neurons from cell death which leads to dementia. The compound has done well in animal studies, but Schubert says the problem is money. So you can do all the animal testing, you can do all the nice assays, you can develop drugs by this criteria, this criteria, you know, different, these different ways, but, but the ultimate test is to put it into people. While Schubert's human trials could be years away, Boston's own Brigham and Women's Hospital is about to begin one of the most anticipated Alzheimer's drug studies in history. It's a very large study, so we're looking for a thousand individuals who meet the criteria to come into the study. That is evidence of amyloid building up in their brain, but people who don't yet have any clear symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Reza Sperling is working with a pill that could reduce the chances of plaque buildup before it causes dementia. It's a preventative but not a cure. I have to admit that sometimes I feel a little bit guilty because I am a clinician and a neurologist and I take care of people who are already suffering from Alzheimer's dementia and it really breaks my heart to say to them that I don't have something to offer them, that I'm thinking that the best chance for treatment would have been five or ten years earlier. Sperling's study could start by year's end and it will take a while to see if the drug is working. If it doesn't, it would be a significant blow to the effort to end Alzheimer's disease. Well, this story is just one of many Alzheimer's reports that Sean has worked on. He joins us now with more. I was really interested with the point about the pharmaceutical companies not getting on board with these drugs anymore. So this research is really part of a much larger effort. What's, what's that about? Well, there's researchers working on the drugs themselves, but there's other researchers who have gone in just as important directions in terms of the animal models they test these drugs in, um, the scanning so we can see the, what's happening in the brain. It used to be you have to uh, die and have an autopsy. Yeah. Now we can see a lot of that stuff happening in the brain. And the other key component is this, it's very sad, this group of people who get Alzheimer's early in life, this early onset on, on Alzheimer's. But they're very hopeful for researchers because they know exactly when the, when the disease is going to appear, when it's going to become symptomatic so they can address the drugs early and see if they're working. This whole debate about senility, dementia, Alzheimer's, is there really a significant distinction? Well, dementia is a description of the symptoms. Uh, Alzheimer's is the most, um, most common form of dementia. And then senility is something that's kind of a holdover. For a while, people thought of Alzheimer's as something natural, just part of getting old, becoming senile. And, and the medical science doesn't, that, that's really not the case. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's is a disease. Dementia is typically related to a mm -hmm. disease.
All right. Uh, well, you heard from Dr. Raisa Sperling in uh, uh, the Sean setup piece, and she's here now. She's the director for the Center of Alzheimer's Research and Treatment at Brigham and Williams Hospital, uh, Brigham and Women's. Uh, let me ask you that one as well. The whole thing about you know whether somebody has is it automatically Alzheimer's when you start to get symptoms of dementia? No. So uh, dementia, as Sean said, is the overall category of having progressive problems with memory and thinking. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia, accounts for about 70 percent of dementia in older people. So sometimes people use them synonymously, but also we know that Alzheimer's disease begins years, maybe a decade before dementia sets in, and so we have the opportunity potentially to prevent the dementia phase of Alzheimer's disease if we treat it early enough. Right now I'm going to put this one to you. Do you know what causes it? Because it seems like some people just are so unlikely candidates to get it and because they've been so active and right. when, and then all of a sudden it comes on. Do you, do you have any idea? So we have some clues. So one is that we know that there are genetic influences. So unfortunately people do inherit some risk factors from their parents, but we also know that there are environmental factors and even though you might eat right and exercise and do all of these things, unfortunately these proteins do build up in the brain. We don't yet know if amyloid plaque that Sean was talking about in his piece is really the cause of Alzheimer's disease or just one critical factor, but we know this builds up mm -hmm. years before people develop symptoms. This, this whole notion that keeping your mind active, doing crossword puzzles and that kind of thing, that's kind of been debunked over the years, that that's really going to be helpful. I think that's true. Unfortunately, I do recommend that people are stay socially and physically active, but I think doing crossword puzzles or mental gymnastics really, unfortunately, has not proven to be uh, protective. Mm -hmm. And it's probably more the people who have trouble doing it are the folks who don't, of course, want to spend their time doing crossword puzzles. So, Sean, you actually visited a lab where they're doing some experiments with mice. What was that about? Oh, mice are so important in this. And what they're able to do now is put probes into the mice's brain. And so they can see, okay, how much amyloid is in there, how much tau is in there. That's another protein that's involved in Alzheimer's. And then they can administer a drug and see, does it work? Does it clear it out? They also can do sleep studies. One thing that they found is amyloid is cleared out of the brain at night when we sleep, and then it builds up again over time. So there's a lot to learn. They're also looking at some of those questions you were asking about puzzles and games and such, and what role they can play in maybe alleviating some of the symptoms or some of the pathology. Uh, Dr. Sperling, some of, the, some of the things on the market right now, Aricept was pushed for years. It seems to be largely ineffective. I mean, is there anything on the market currently that, that, that either can stop or is slightly preventative that can sort of like slow down the symptoms? So unfortunately none of the drugs that are currently out there really slow the progression of the underlying brain disease. I do think they can, drugs like Aricept and other drugs can maybe improve the symptoms for a short time, so they're really symptom drugs. What we need is something that's really changing the disease, the underlying process in the brain. That's why these clinical trials are so important. I think we've been doing those trials rather late in the disease, and what's exciting is now we're starting these trials much earlier. And one thing they're talking about now is a cocktail of drugs, right. kind of like they treat like HIV. Mm. Exactly. Like HIV, exactly. So you have one that addresses the amyloid, maybe one that addresses another protein, one that deals with inflammation, maybe one that helps the neurons regenerate. So that's what they're, they're talking about. But only really it's the amyloid mm. drugs that are kind of closest in the pipeline to be coming to fruition. So now di diagnosis-wise, you can really see this stuff in the brain. It used to be you had to die, as Sean said earlier, exactly. before you really knew for sure. But so now uh, um, we can see amyloid plaques in the brain very clearly, and what's really exciting is now we're starting to be able to see this other protein Sean mentioned, tau in mm. tangles. So that would really allow us to see the full pathology of Alzheimer's disease in the living brain and hopefully treat it. All right, get right on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is really Sean Cochran. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank really. you.